It is a relationship between the person and the soil. Ancient Europeans saw it as part of their ancestral line, their mother as well. And something happened to break that connection, to make people look at it as an object rather than as a living being. Farmers basically came into this beautiful, nutrient-rich, perfect uh, physical property soil. Once they started getting rid of all the prairie, you had this erosion factor, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. But basically, it was done so that the adjoining ground could drain quick enough that it could be farmed. When we treat our soil that way, we lose our soil. Our soil ends up in the Mississippi or the Missouri, and it ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. And so that's why we've gone from multiple feet, many, many feet of topsoil down to just, in some places, only inches, because we're not retaining it. It's not being held. And so without um, roots to hold the soil in place, it washes away with every rain. The 100th county of Iowa is in the Mississippi River Delta in Louisiana. We've been missing that 100th county for a long time. It's our topsoil and it's in Louisiana. We have some pastures that are on hilly land that used to be farmed. And you can see how much thinner the topsoil is and how that land has been worn away until, you know, it's like grass sometimes doesn't even want to grow there. You know, once that topsoil is gone, it's gone. Sometimes we go too far and then we we'll say, wait a minute, we're screwing this up. Let's, what can we do to fix it? So people are building ponds, they're doing terraces. Uh, they're actually coming back to plant prairie. There's, there's a thing called the CRP where farmers are paid a rental payment to put environmentally sensitive areas back into prairie. The reason I went to my CRP is I was getting tired of seeing my dirt go down the creek. People down in New Orleans don't really want to pay for my farm. So. <laughs> the roots and the microbes, they all come together to give the soil structure, help it to retain water while still being able to drain. A lot of like things they're finding out is really good when you're planting your corn and planting your beans rather than just tear up the dirt every time. Because you just tear up the dirt every time, you're, you're kind of destroying that ecosystem. That actual smell that everybody loves of freshly plowed dirt or soil is actually the smell of death because you're killing all the microbiology and everything else that's in the ground. You don't see a lot of plows running anymore. What used to be two or three or four passes of tillage, a lot of guys have reduced it down to one or two. That's an improvement. That reduces soil loss. Most crop fields now have the bean stubble left on. That reduces the wind shear at the surface so you aren't getting the topsoil erosion. Or in the case of corn, leaving the few inches of corn stalks standing and uh, blowing the rest of the corn plant out the back end of the combine to cover the soil so that raindrops don't impact so hard. So all of these changes are very good things. Cover crops are a great way to introduce diversity to a production agricultural system. They minimize or eliminate soil erosion. They shade the soil. They can act as a mulch, like a green mulch, a living mulch on the soil. So not only are they sequestering carbon from the atmosphere, um, but their um, root mass adds to the organic matter in the soil so that we can have all of those soil microbes being fed through the winter. And so those microbes, which are necessary, part of the system, are active and available when we're planting again in the spring. It's really neat to watch the last five or six years that we've been changing some of our farming practices. What, that, what is that gonna be like in another 10, 20, and 30? And I know some guys that's been doing it that long and their soil looks really great and you can watch it change maybe from a brown color to getting blacker and blacker. We're building our soils, making our soils better for my kids or my brother's kids to be able to have the land
better in another 20 or 30 years than what it was when my grandfather took over, my father took over, or when myself and my brothers took over. We didn't get to where we are overnight. It took, it took us hundreds of years to get this thing plowed up and the dirt washed away and whatever, you know. So it's not gonna come back. It'll probably come back slower than it left. So the full uh, benefit of this, I might not see in my lifetime. I hope my kids will see it.